bitches than you're used to, Uncle. <laughs> My mother's been looking for you. You arrived for King's Landing today. Before you go, you will call on Lord and Lady Stark and offer your sympathies. What good will my sympathies do then? None, but it is expected of you. Your absence has already been noted. Well, that means nothing to me. Oh, I can't stand the wailing of women. <sighs> One word, and I hit you again. I'm telling mother, 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 mother. Go, tell her. But first you will get to Lord and Lady Stark, and you will fall on your knees in front of them and tell them how very sorry you are, that you are at their service and that all your prayers are with them. Do you understand? You can't. Do you understand? A scale, so I'm gonna start with a scale template. I've already got some drawn out here, so I'm gonna get a good idea of what it looked like size-wise, I'm going to go with this teardrop shape. Might even square off the bottom a little bit. Alright, so that's a generic template. It's roughly the size of these. The other ones will go over top of it to cover up most of the top but it'll give a better effect of layers. So I'm gonna use this. Okay, I've got one line done. This paper, or I'm sorry, this foam is thin enough you can use a pair of scissors on it. Make the cutting a little easier than it is with a razor knife. Now, if you wanna cut these out individually, you can put it on another layer and cut out two layers at a time. So you'll have twice as many. But I wanted to see about this concept of making a chain of them and just wrapping it around like this, leaving them connected. So we're going to try that first. I'll continue cutting out the shape. I'm not worrying too much about the top. It's going to be covered. But I don't want more foam thickness than necessary. So I'm just trying to trim it down a little bit. It looks like you have a row of shark teeth. And we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up so that each layer covers the layer below. So this will be our first layer. And we'll continue this process for the next layer, offsetting it so they come down like this, fit in between so on and so forth through the process. But before I do that, um, there's one thing I do want to do. Is that here at the bottom, it's all beat up looking. It's all divoted and everything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I start gluing these pieces on. I'm just gonna do it right up to the line. I've got this piece I'm going to use, this Dremel attachment, it's a stone bit. And I have this round one I'm also going to use. Actually, they'll probably both be pretty much the same, so we'll just start with a round one and see how it does. Now you can see I glued down the first layer, snapped here, so I spread it apart just a little bit. And the tops have been tacked down, the bottoms have been tacked down, and it's nice and flush up against here. So we're going to continue this with the next layer that goes over top. So we're just going to make another line of these, just like we did here. Continuing on to the next layer, we want to make sure everything lines up in between. We want them to be offset. We don't want them to be straight up and down like this. We want to then shift it over so it sits in between. So we're going to start tacking these down. 
and I'm actually going to start at the bottom and then tack the top when I'm done. That way I have a little bit more control over where the piece is set. So I'm going to go ahead and run a line here. Okay, so there's the second layer. Okay, so I need to add a scale here. I have another layer, so I'll go ahead and take a scale from there. Trim it to fit. And this one will not be offset, but we can live with that. Repeat this for the third. Which I have here. Again, I'm going to focus on the front to make sure everything's offset. Like that. And we'll begin gluing. Start somewhere near the front. So we're going to glue the first few of these like this. i to make sure my alignment's good. We're getting close to being at the top of this, and looking through the pictures I have, I don't see a lot, excuse that, uh, it broke on me, uh, I don't have a lot of images where it really shows what's on the, what the actual top looks like, if I can stop hitting the ringer button. Um, so I'm just going to kind of wing it, I guess, for now. So I think what I'm going to do is get another piece of foam, have some more foam, I'm going to make a template, you know what, I think I'll do one more layer around it first and then I'll cap it. So I'm going to start with one more layer. This layer I'm actually going to go ahead and stick on ahead of time and adjust as I need and then I'll cut the actual pieces out after. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of stick it where we need to go. I'm going to make sure I get the good curve in it. Because this curve is getting difficult. So I'm going to have to go in and make cuts to compensate for these curves. Okay, to finish off the top, I've cut a piece of foam, roughly larger than that, and I'm going to go ahead and heat form this to this shape. I'm just going to heat this up with the heat gun and hold it in place to see how much of this will actually fold without all these wrinkles. If I can get the whole thing to go, then I won't have to cut any little darts in here. So we'll see in just a second. look like I'll get it all, but I got most of it formed, we'll just have to cut this here to make it fit.
No, that's not part of the set now. There's a little right here. One last one from the here. Actually, added a whole layer of Mod Podge to this, and I sprinkled the top with table salt to give it a texture as well. I wanted to have kind of a rough texture, and as you can see, it's not just flat foam anymore. So I'm kind of liking that. I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, so I didn't record it. But basically, I just put it on and sprinkled some table salt on and covered it with another layer of Plasti Dip. Uh, not Plasti Dip. Mod Podge. So I'm going to add one more layer of Mod Podge to this to lock everything in, make sure the sand doesn't come off, and then this is primed, prepped, and ready to go for painting. And if you skipped all the salt part, which is fine, just make sure you put two or three layers of Mod Podge on and you're at the same part where we're ready to start painting. All right, the Mod Podge is all dry. I went over it with a little bit of sandpaper just to kind of smooth just a little bit um, some of the really rough parts, really rougher parts. And I think it's ready for paint. Got a good texture to it. So I'm liking it. I'm liking it. So I'm going to paint it. And I have my reference image right here. I'm going to go with the green egg. And you can see it's a lighter color down here, and then it goes to a green, then a darker green. So I think I'm actually going to start with the yellow, because yellow really is a good color with green. And I'm going to cover the majority of it with the yellow, probably up to about here. And I'm going to brush the green on this direction, kind of leave some of the yellow showing underneath. And I have a green. It's a very light green, but I'm going to darken it up as we go with some black. And then I thought maybe some gold highlights just to kind of make the whole thing snap, pop, whatever it is, Rice Krispies. I've got just this yin yang looking container from a snack thing I'm going to use and a paintbrush. And that's all we're really going to do for this is just uh, go with it with acrylics or go at it with acrylics. It's got three layers of acrylic on it now, and to kind of break up this yellow, I've added a little bit of brown to the yellow to make a yellowish brown, I guess. Mixed it up real good. I'm just going to use this. Just kind of highlight some areas. Mainly where it transitions from one color to the other. I'm going to wipe some of it away. Alright. I like how that breaks up the yellow a little bit. The bottom is all done. It's got a good gradient on it, darker, and then gets a little bit lighter. And the next layer we're going to do is going to be the green. I've already took some of this green, and since it's a little lighter than I want, I just added a couple drops of black to it, just to darken it, just a little bit. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to a sponge, because it doesn't have as much of a tip on it as this, and I don't want all that fine detail, because I'm basically just going to brush over, and I'm going to try to leave the underside the color that's there already. So put a little bit on, wipe a little bit off. Basically kind of like a dry brush technique. And we're just going to start hitting these. I 
but as much as I can here I left a little bit of the yellow showing through near the bottom a little less as you go up and now I'm just going to go back over with the regular green without any of the darkness to it none of the black it's just a straight green and I'm just going to put a little of my brush and wipe most of it off just like a dry brush and I'm just going to do some random spots with it Again, this is just meant to break up the solid colors kind of focusing down on the tips of them like down here and pulling up just trying to leave that little bit lighter color on the edges for the other other part instead of adding black I add a little bit of brown the brown actually makes it kind of a a duller green a little more like a camo green color so we're actually going to use this on the top section here first thing I'm going to do is make sure that we got a little on here because this darker color foam is harder to color and the brown is a much more natural color you might see in nature that's why I went with brown paint job is mostly finished. I'm just going to add a little bit of highlights with some yellow. Just very light along the edges. Just kind of, again, add some color variants. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to seal the whole thing and we're going to prepare for the last little bit, which is the distressing of it. Okay, to finish up the paint job I used some metallic and I just basically touched up some areas got some highlights got it back in some crevices did along here it just kind of gives it a shine kind of breaks up the color a little bit I also put a little bit on the top to kind of gloss it up before we move on to distressing this just giving it a black wash making it look a little bit more like it's been out in the world and not just freshly made I wanted to mention the clear coat. This is a gloss clear. Um, this isn't what I used. I actually used a matte. Um, matte makes it so it's not too shiny. This will shine it up really good. But I wanted to mention that a lot of people get confused that you don't use this until the very end to protect your finish. That's not necessarily so. If you're going to do a black wash, it's always good to put a layer or two on and let it set. Because when you put the black wash on, you risk, you run the risk of when you're wiping some of that off, wiping off your other paint that you've already put on and the process of wiping off the black wash. So if you want to protect your paint underneath, it's always good to put a clear coat on at this stage, right before you do the black wash. And then when it's all done, put another layer or two to protect your final finish. So for those who are confused about when to use the clear coat, this is the time, right before the black wash. So now, obviously, we're on to the black wash. I have my container again, and I've just got some black acrylic. It's already thinned down pretty good. As you can see it's pretty liquidy. Maybe you can't see, but it's already pretty liquidy. Actually, it's thin enough that I run this through my airbrush. But I'm going to actually thin it down a little bit more with my water. There's no real obvious consistency you need here but you want to thin enough that most of it will wipe away before it dries. You need some paper towels. I don't really prefer these. These are a little too stiff. I want to see if I can find some regular paper towels. Okay, now that I dropped everything and the wife had a conversation with me while I was trying to record, I guess I need one of those, those signs like on the air you put it on the door. Um, got our black wash Got a regular brush, nothing too fancy, but I want it big enough that we can get it in there real quick and then wipe it off with this kind of a paper towel. I prefer these because they're easier, they're softer, they're easier to get in these cracks and wipe most of it out. We're going to start at the bottom here and we're just going to put a thin layer on just like this, get it into the cracks and crevices. And I'm going to try to wipe most of it off. And you can see 
how much it highlighted that detail down here compared to this side. And you can actually do this in layers, adding some, wiping it away. And you want it to be darker, you can add more and wipe that away. You continue to build up those layers if you want certain parts to be a little dirtier. So the bottom is now done. And we are going to continue that process over some of the scales, getting it down the cracks and crevices. We don't want to do too much at once because we run the risk of it drying before we can really wipe it off. while you're doing it. And as you can see it actually darkens the color quite a bit. So here it is. Finished product minus the clear coat finish. As you can see this really adds a lot of depth to it, having all this dirt in the areas and up under the things and everything. It just really, really brings it to life and makes it look much more realistic. Finish him!